greet our brethren on live stream as well. We're glad to have all of our brethren gathering together this morning. For our opening this morning, I want to talk about pressing in, pressing forward. And there's a, <clears throat> one of our brethren that is now in that great cloud of witnesses that I wanted to uh, remind us all of this morning. And this is a dear brother that I'm looking forward to meeting on that great triumphant morning. And his name is Bartimaeus. And the uh, account that I want to read to you all this morning is found in Mark 10, verses 47 to 52. <clears throat> in verse 46, we're told that Jesus and the apostles went to Jericho and they're leaving. <clears throat> so there was a great multitude following with him. And this is where it picks up. This is Bartimaeus. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more a great deal, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. And he, Bartimaeus, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight, and follow Jesus in the way. <clears throat> we first must have a perception that Jesus is near. Bartimaeus knew. He couldn't see, but he knew that the Lord was near. And as soon as Bartimaeus knew that Jesus was coming, he stopped begging. He stopped. He didn't continue to beg by the highway any longer. When we know Jesus is near, we do not carry on with business as usual. We stop what we're doing. We too are like Bartimaeus in that we have stopped all of the common things this day that we must do while in the earth, like working or tending to things in the home or those sorts of things. We've stopped those things because we know that Jesus is near. Because he told us, for where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst of them. <clears throat> we have all come in the name of the Lord Jesus this morning, haven't we? We've come expecting to receive from the Lord. He is here in our midst. And if Jesus is not here, then we're here in vain. Amen. This is the day, the Lord's day, and it's a day that we have been anticipating, a day in which we knew our Lord would be among us and where he would command the blessing. And this is a high day like no other day of the week. We can't say that every day of the week is the Lord's day, although we commit it unto him. But this is a time where we gather together. And I wanted to read um, from Hebrews, a passage here, that is pertinent to what we're speaking of. It's Hebrews 10, 24 to 25. <clears throat> it says, And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as a manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much more as ye see the day approaching. Now we have done this throughout the week. We've anticipated, we've given ourselves to the Lord in different ways, through the scriptures, through fellowship with one another, and it's all for the anticipation of this day that we have been coming to. And so we, we are coming to the Lord this day to receive from him. Now, just like Bartimaeus, there were competing voices, weren't there, in the background. People telling him to be quiet, stop talking, don't cry out for the Son of God. But what did he do? He pressed in. Amen. So we know that many charged him that he should hold his peace, but he cried a great deal more. Mm -hmm. We live in an environment, brethren, that is full of competing voices. We have com competing voices. Maybe even this day we have some pullings and some, uh -huh. some things that are going to try and compete with, with receiving from the Lord. <clears throat> we have competing voices that would tell us not to speak. Uh -huh. How many of us have been in an environment where we've been told maybe water it down a little bit or don't speak so candidly about something or, or maybe your words are too harsh, or those sorts of things. Uh -huh. Or some would seek to have our time or our resources. 
And some of these things may not appear to be wrong in and of themselves, but when they compete with us drawing near to the master at all costs, that is when they become wrong. Bartimaeus was not willing to allow for the son of David to pass him by. So this is good to ask ourselves, are we, are we willing to allow for the son of David to pass us by without being near him? <clears throat> when Bartimaeus was told to hold his peace, he pressed harder. He pressed harder and cried more loudly. And Bartimaeus lived out the principle of the kingdom that we're told about. And from the day of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence and the violent take it by force. Bartimaeus didn't care. He was going to press through the crowd anyways, and he was going to obtain that blessing. Mm -hmm. We know that while Jesus was in the earth, that he was always about doing the business of his father, wasn't he? He told us that, that he was doing the work that the Lord sent him to do. So we know, we can reason that he didn't cater to the conveniences of the flesh. He didn't, he didn't cater to that. Rather, the flesh had to be forsaken in order to receive the blessing of the Lord. And this is still true today. Bartimaeus knew that he had to forsake the conveniences of sitting by the highway and begging in order to get to Christ. He had to get to him. <clears throat> he was willing to seek the Lord at all cost. He knew that Jesus would be the only one who would be able to truly have mercy on him and, he and heal him. And we, too, Seek after the Lord in this manner, because we know that he is the one that has the words of eternal life. We know this. We have tasted, and we have seen that the Lord is good. We also know by experience in our own walk with the Lord that Jesus is not an impersonal Savior. He's not impersonal at all, and he is moved by those who seek after him with their whole hearts. He's compelled to them. And this is why the response that he had to Bartimaeus calling him was not unusual. Note that Jesus stood. When he heard Bartimaeus, he stopped traveling, and he stood, and he commanded him to be called unto him. The Lord is very attentive to those who know they are in need of him and him alone. He's, he pays attention to that. Do you remember when you cried out, Thou son of David, have mercy on me? What was the Lord's response to you? Did he continue going or did he stop? He stopped and he had mercy on you and he healed you. The Lord is faithful to not cast anyone out. We know because he said this, all that the father giveth me shall come to me and him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. Amen. We can see in this account that Jesus truly is the good shepherd and he cares for his sheep. <clears throat> So the blind man said unto him, Lord, that I may receive my sight. This is what Bartimaeus is coming to the Lord for. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Faith is the point here. Jesus is underlining that. He said, Your faith hath made thee whole. We know that without faith it is impossible to please God, but with faith it is possible to please the holy and righteous God. And faith will always compel the Lord to take notice and to act. He will always be compelled by this. And we have countless accounts in the scriptures where the faith of an individual was noticed by the Lord and a great blessing was bestowed upon him. There were two accounts where the Lord marveled at the faith of people and he responded, didn't he, to them. <clears throat> in fact, those who believe and have not yet seen the Lord are blessed. He, he pronounced a blessing on those who have not seen but yet believe. They, they are blessed. Jesus is so moved by faith that he has given this promise. <clears throat> he said, this is to Peter. Then Peter began to say unto him, Lo, we have left all and have followed thee. Now here comes the promise. Those who have left Christ or left the world for Christ to follow him. This is their faith speaking now. And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, there is no man that hath left house, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my sake and the gospels, but he shall receive an hundredfold now in this time, houses, and brethren, and sisters, and mothers, and children, and lands, with persecutions, and in the world to come, eternal life. This is the response that our Lord has to faith. He has us to faith. Now, 
every single person sitting in this room I know, because I've known you for a while, has experienced this very thing, where you have left family, you have left lands, you have left all of these things that Jesus listed because of your faith in him. Mm. And he has responded yeah. by, by multiplying those things unto you, hasn't he? Yeah. This is the response that the Lord has to faith. <clears throat> so brethren, as we come and gather this morning around the things that will be spoken, we, we all have been in the same situation as Bartimaeus. We all have been blinded. We all were. <clears throat> But the Lord healed us of our blindness, didn't he? <clears throat> and and we, were, we were able to see the truth and see the Father for, for how he is or who he is. But it was because of his mercy that once we, we were blind, but now we can see. <clears throat> However, our vision is being constantly refined and perfected. You know, you can go to the, the eye doctor and get glasses, but... There are times where your vision has to be corrected a little bit more and a little bit more. You can still see, but you can see better with the correction. This is what the Lord's doing for us. And it is in this environment of the assembly where our vision is improved. Here is where the truths of the Lord are brought to light by the preaching and expounding of the gospel. <clears throat> the Lord is using every member in the body to supply nutrients to our vision. Our eyes need our earthly eyes need nutrients. So do our spiritual eyes. Our spiritual eyes need nutrients in order to see clearly. So the Lord's using every member to do that. While Bartimaeus received his earthly vision that day, I am sure he would be the first to tell you that his spiritual vision was greatly increased as he followed in the way after the Lord. <clears throat> so in closing, brethren, I would encourage us all to have the spirit of Bartimaeus this morning to press in, just like he did, to press in and to, to lay aside. It, it, it said he threw his garment off whenever the Lord called him. So we want to throw, throw those things off that would tend to hinder us and to press in and seek the Lord while he may be found today. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>